Hello everybody! I'm Hope, and like a good father, I'm finally back after 30 years. You may be wondering when I'm gonna leave again, who knows? I make jokes about it, but it's honestly pretty sad. I'm gonna assume that everyone's like, ah, we're so used to it by now, we're just like, we don't expect anything different, but I'm over here like, man, do I feel bad, but I guess it just be like that sometimes. Anyway, welcome back to Let's Play Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, you know, typically I could just go over a spiel like blah 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 blah. Uh, things are going okay in my life. Been a bit very busy with work. You know, making the muns. Gotta pay off your debt somehow, you know. It's almost like this... It's absurd, dude. Debt piles up so fast. It's bullshit. Anyway. I'm excited to continue Fate because I've really wanted to continue it. Oh, and my computer shat out on me last week, so I had to spend a week getting it fixed, but it finally seems to be working. So hopefully, hopefully that goes good. I didn't want to upload on April 1st because then you guys would think, oh man, now that's just in poor taste. So I'm recording this April 2nd, but you know, it should be going up April 3rd most likely. Previously, we went on a date with Rin, and it was really wholesome and cute. We played baseball batting at the batting cages, and Rin, low-key, started becoming, like, a bit more uppity-up on the waifu scale. I'm starting to like her more now. It's, it's, it's doing good. We're doing good. And then we got home, and we hear strange noises. I think uh, the boogie monsters here, you know? It's been a long time, but I'm hoping to have some fun, and... I really hope that everyone is doing okay with how crazy the world is. If you feel so inclined, please leave a comment just about anything, like about how you're doing, if you like the episode, if you want to ask a question, just do it. And I'll... I love reading them, it really does make my day, guys. Thank you. Why don't we just go ahead and get started because, you know, I'm just really excited. So we're gonna start by voicing like this, I hear a sound. No, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> the instant I open the door, I can feel the stagnation in the air. The remains of the intrusion. The air is heavy, like silk, with just a small amount of filth. Huh. It's a pretty strange analogy, but I get it. Also, it's gonna be probably Caster. I mean, she's like the main bad guy for this most of this route, I guess. I run in with my shoes on. Bro, that's that's heinous. You're you're Japanese and you run in the house with shoes on? Bitch, you're gonna get whipped. <laughs> I don't have the time to take them off and I don't have the composure to even consider such a thing. Tosaka and Seiba are running behind me. I don't, I, uh, I don't even look at them and head straight to the living room. I run into the living room, the lights are turned off. Ah, they, they look on to me, Shiro. Seems like you need glasses. Under the gray sky, the dark room contains. Why did they do this to me? Like, the first thing she says is always like that. Kill me, please. Bro, we all need a, like... A, I'm not saying that shit. Bro. I need to get bonked. Go into horny jail. EXCUSE ME?! Holy spinach in a can, Popeye! I'm about to pop off! How dare- Okay, someone's made weird fan art of this, I can tell. That is a really weird, seductive way of holding her body. Caster, I'm just gonna need you to chill the fuck out. Just, just, just relax. I get that you're hot mommy, but like... Sometimes you just gotta take the gloves off. And just, just, just be normal for like five minutes. <laughs> Fujine standing unconscious in an enemy called Cast. Seriously, this is actually kind of terrifying because I don't want Fujine to be hurt. You know, she survived the fate route, so I mean, if they could do anything Caster. to her now. I hear Saber's voice from behind me. The two stop when they see Caster. It must be because Fujine is held as a hostage. Caster will cast a spell if Saber or Tosaka attack her. It will be faster than anyone here. 
even if Saber charges, even if Tosaka casts a spell, Caster's finger will light up faster than anything. Their position. If Caster would would do that, Fujine's face will explode like a tomato. It's weird how that is censored, or did that is that just a glitch with the text? Hmm. My mind freezes. I'm angry. I'm so mad that my vision is about to turn red. But my mind is objective. I never knew that you get calm if anger passes a certain level. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that happens sometimes. Seriously, dude, caster ASMR in my earphones is like actual heaven. She laughs. I take it like it's happening to someone else. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Well, that's just peachy, man. So you're telling me that back in 2004, they had the Ara Ara Mami stereotype voice? Because, has that just existed forever? Like, has voice acting in Japan just been that way? Where, like, if they need a hot whammon, older whammon, they, they, they get the voice to sound like this? Because, I mean, I'm all for it, but... The voice is enough to create sparks between them. Tosaka glares at Castor and does not do anything. Fujine's life will end if she moves. If Tosaka's going to move, I'll... Huh? I, I don't know what that's supposed to say. I'll shove Tosaka before Caster will. I'll move Tos... I don't know. Huh, that's weird. <laughs> Probably make her brain melt. <laughs> I see. No, never. I would never remember that. The event of the temple, Caster told Archer and me to be her subordinates. I mean, I would kind of consider it, you know? You know? Tosaka's angry. Like, there's that meme template. I would never simp, but you! <laughs> That's surprising. Archer told Tosaka about it, huh? I guess Archer talks to Tosaka a lot. It's like... They're like each other's therapist. Bro, you're like 30. You're talking to us like you're 50. I mean, even if you were 50, I'm down. But what? who's to say that that ain't true? Maybe you just have really good witchy cream regimen that you make out of weird herbs that you find out in the garden. You can't make cream with herbs. Uh, you make oil, essential oil. <laughs> Kester's watching me. As if saying she's not interested in Tosaka. Yeah, there has never been quite a dumbass slash uh, bullet sponge that is Shiro. Man gets hurt every day. Many Caster, you've killed me before. I'm just gonna tell you now, it's not that difficult. So if you really want me alive, you're not you're gonna need to hold back. And also sit on my uh pants or something. That way I was gonna say something else, but I had to censor myself because I'm I need to go to jail. And elegant dude, this isn't above you. Like, of course you're doing this, man. Ooh, that means she will kill if I refuse. This is odd. Wow, disobeying your master. Mm, Kuzuki's like, huh. The air seems weird today. That red text is similar to the Angra uh, text, right? That was 
I think, Anger and that Grail? Remember when the Grail was talking or some shit? I'm pretty certain that that's Angra. And like it was red text like that and the, the, the audio crackled. Kind of reminds me of that a little bit. But I mean, things have been going on with Shiro's circuit lately. No, I'm pretty sure she obeys her master regularly. She seems like a total sub with her master. Yes. でも残念。悪いけどあなたに興味はないの。魔術師としては優秀みたいだけど、私には到底及ばないわ。その点そこの坊やは理想的よ。魔術師として身近なものを行するのは早すぎですし。You would be correct. A charming laugh. Castor urges me for my reply while digging her fingers into Fujine's neck. Seriously, what is up with the text today? Man, I am so sorry, but there's a blonde man who would like to differ. Saber's presence moves. She's ready to fight. She will charge a caster if she sees an opening. だから無駄なのよ、セイバー。いいこと。ここでこうしている私でさえ影に過ぎない。I mm. don't think that's a bluff. 私の力の供給源は町に住むすべての人間。戦人隊でマスターを持っているようなものよ。Seems like a lot of energy to make that much of a それがどういうことか分かって? Yeah, it just means we gotta kick your ass a thousand times. It's fine. そう。魔力のない人間でも魂そのものは別でしょ。私たちはもともとソウルイーターだもの。マスターから命という魔力を奪えばいくらでも魔力は引き出せる。And fate just writes itself for the dojin makers. Like it, it just it really does. But you know, if souls exist in this universe, does that mean God is canonical in fate? あなたのその怪物じみた宝具も今の私ならなんだ。That's <laughs> that's that's pretty crazy. That's OP as fuck, actually. An unlimited source of energy. <sighs> Magical energy. She sucks out of everybody in the town. That's why she's going to win. She's saying she's invincible because she controls innocent people like... It's the same. She's saying she will laugh on top of other sacrifices. The firing hammer rises. The heat returns to my calm mind. It's time to smack her the fuck up. Nah, dude, Shiro is gonna overcome. He's gonna show men everywhere how to be a true Chad. Gotta overcome the simp energy. Bro, that just... Deep Boy Shiro hits different sometimes, man. There's nothing else. I have nothing to give to her. A gritting sound. Cast a grits her teeth in annoyance and sighs as if to calm herself down. I don't want the Holy Grail, homie. Nah. I mean, I... Uh, I'm allied with this one whammon named Tosaka, so... Basically... You're doing abhorrent things that she is not gonna like. There's no sarcasm in her voice. There's only anger. Damn. Maybe uh, in an alternate fanfic universe, Caster. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 
I glare at Castor, taking my stare full of enmity, Castor. <laughs> Laughs for some reason. The Grail's pretty fickle, my guy. You're not really a guy, but you get what I mean. Of course, Shiro has an innate desire for the Grail inside of him, but he could totally deny that desire with enough strength and willpower. So I feel like the Grail isn't as omnipotent as it seems. My throat clogs up. I didn't say anything against what I believe in. Yeah, sure, you just gotta go deep inside of that trauma-filled mind of yours. I mean, that I won't disagree with. At that instant, my mind freezes. I don't understand anything since my mind's frozen. Not even Tosaka, who's watching me with worry. Not even Saber, who looks down painfully. Not even the nausea that fills me up. Shit. How do you know this? Okay, this is awesome. I genuinely did not expect this to happen. I did not expect Caster to have these answers. I, I don't know how it'll probably get explained, but that's crazy. I'm really liking the build up for Caster being like the main antagonist of this route. Um. What I mean by that, like a pseudo antagonist, like like how how in the fate route, the major for the majority of the game, we, it was Heracles, and this one is Caster, which is pretty freaking cool, because like we didn't get to learn anything about her in the first route, really. So this is awesome. I really like the fact that um, Shiro gets to pop off against Caster, like with actual. More than just, like, fighting, there's actual more to it than that. I really respect the writing to actually delve into this. It wouldn't say forced. I mean... If you look at it in terms of fate, like, not the game or the novel, but fate itself, I suppose, maybe? Nice. Now, finally, in this route, Rin gets to learn about Shiro's past. Yes. I've wanted to know her opinions on it. It is ironic. It's almost like Shiro's an amazing character, dude. Somebody's self-projecting! Is your past similar? Hmm. Hmm. Probably. Wow. Did not see this coming. I did not see Caster finding a little bit of herself in Shiro. That's crazy. It's actually pretty cool. This game keeps surprising me, man. See, the thing that I love about um, Fate and a lot of other series that I enjoy is that Almost all of the major characters and antagonists and, um, they have flaws and direct comparisons that always directly go back to the protagonist in one way or another. Even if it's a small thing, there is always a connection between them in a certain way that that's why I think, like, antagonists and villains and major characters like this are way more interesting and fun to watch if they are connected and have not only their own motives and goals but have this extra layer of 
within themselves that directly correlates with the main character. It's one of my favorite things of all time. Um, I've talked about it a lot, but I really like Naruto for that. I know a lot of people hate it, but it's one of my favorite series, so sue me. Um, but I like Fate, because I think Fate does this, like, amazingly. It's great. I just love this kind of stuff. Homie, I don't trust you. I trust your voice in my ears, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, I know she's being serious right now. She's probably not telling a lie. Caster must seriously think so. Oh, she knows. She knows. あ、オッケー。他のサーバントにはまるで。ああ、I that's crazy, no way. It creates a crack in Saber's resolve. It's, it's because Saber feels that Caster is telling the truth. The final negotiation. Saber is perplexed. It's because avoidable battles should be avoided and it will be best if the Holy Grail could be obtained that way. And besides, the enemy has Fujine's life in her hands. There's only one answer. Even Osaka is biting her lips as if she's given up. I... Bibbidi bobbidi boo, we're gonna save. This is awesome. This is a cool little choice. Um... I mean, obviously, my first gut instinct is to refuse. But could that be the trick? Like, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, with, with Ilya in the first route, refusing was the way to go, right? Um... So, I guess... I don't see anything going well with obeying at all. I don't see a, an upside to this. I don't, I don't think... I, I can't see a, a plan or anything that, um... Like Shiro has or Tosaka has, but... I'll probably refuse because... That's just how I feel. I say so to the Magus without her looking away. <laughs> Three people gasp. Nobody here expected me to reply like that. The balls on this man. If battles can be avoided, they should be avoided. And if the Holy Grail can be shared, it should be shared. But... Damn you and your ideals, Shiro! Ooh. Ooh! Dude, is this directly comparing to Archer? Like, you know, like, I feel like, in a way, Archer's right with what he believes and talks about, but to Shiro, he may be right, but, like, he ain't cool with that method, though. Like, he's like, I get it. But the way you're doing it is freaking dumb. <laughs> See, I, I thought this as well, but then I start to think 
in like a conspiracy way because my brain loves to branch out into weird shit. Damn, savage. Okay. Caster's voice fills with intent to kill. At the same time, Saber gets ready to attack, and... Oh shit, sure, what are you gonna do? I stop her with all my might. I'm gonna need you to project some shit, Shiro, please. She'll be killed if any one of us moves. I'll lose the person that was with me until now. A person that is like an older sister to me. I can't allow that. But the two stop. I take a step towards Castor as if to hide them. Nah, bro. I'm about to pull out these yin and yang swords and, like, just completely slash that shadow up. I'm gonna send you back to the shadow realm. Castor smiles once again. Her arm. Her left arm that was carrying Fujine points slowly at me. Yeah, he gave him a few chances. It's only fair. Oh, okay. Well, damn. Nah, don't chop my hand off, please. I'd rather not. That sounds very painful. Saber gasps. I apologize to Saber in my mind and take another step towards Caster. Yeah, just let me chop your hand off, homie. Dude, what's Shiro's game he's playing here? Like, I can't... I'm thinking... There we go, exactly. We're gonna slice that bitch off. Like pepperoni. The Black Witch says so with a smile. No, this isn't the Shiro way. He's not gonna... He's gotta save everybody. Even if it kills him, I guess. No. No, not if it... You know what I mean. It's something like that. I do see the possibility of that, Kasaka. I get it. I do. But you have a point. So I can only apologize to them in my head. Christ on a jump rope. That is some bowels. God, I love Shiro, man. He's so cool. I raise my left arm. Caster should be able to cut off my left arm along with the command spell with one word. I point my left arm at Caster. Caster still must not trust me as she puts some distance between us. I walk to her. Caster's right in front of me and the other two are far away from me. I walk to the place where I won't be able to get away and hold out my arm. <laughs> the Black Witch watches me in astonishment. <laughs> okay, are you laughing at the fact that we're doing this or is there a trick that you see? Wow. Oh shit! So, like, Shiro was genuinely gonna go through with his arm getting ripped off and then saving Kujine. Caster, seeing that, realizes that, man, this guy is something else. Her robe flutters. Caster keeps a hold of Fujine with her left hand and takes out a strange dagger with her right. Oh, 
Oh, never mind. You're just gonna absolutely kill me. I guess we're too soft. Or something. I don't know. She swings her dagger. It goes not for my arm, but my heart, and... Please? She explodes. Saber charges in with such speed that I thought she exploded. The speed must have been faster than Caster expected as her dagger is repelled. Alright, that's good, that's good. Caster retreats and Saber follows her. She must have figured out that she can't get away. So, Nara. Smiling happily, Caster puts power into her right hand and... Oh, bad, 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 bad. I pray from the bottom of my heart and reach out with my left arm. We're gonna use our final command spell? Aren't we boned? That's our last one! We're boned! We Saber stops. Her movements are stopped by the absolute obedience enforced by the command spell. There. Excuse me? Bro, that, 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 um, wow, Shiro, you know, something tells me that impulse thinking wasn't a great idea. I, I think for once you made a very poor choice, but I mean, I get it. Your situation is kind of insane, but, um. Is it just me, or is that dagger just defying the laws of physics and just passing through the armor as if it's, like, jello? It's like it's not even there. It's like it can pierce through any object or something. It's a dimension dagger. The dagger is stabbed as easily as making footprints in snow. Okay, seriously? But if we have our last command spells, are we gonna actually kill Saber this into the route? I mean, if Shiro isn't a master, but he still has, like, his abilities, could he still fight other people? I mean, yeah, but this wouldn't be... A, like, how would this be fate without Saber in it? Like, excuse me? You can't just take Sa Okay, I gotta see what happens. It feels like time has stopped. Saber's looking down at her chest in blank amazement. So, this is my Saber. Oh. So you're telling me I could just stab myself in the ass and be fine? Ooh, a blade of betrayal that overturns any contract. You are like me now. Oh, that means that Saber's her hers now the contract with Shiro is done because interesting that's actually really bad N now we have to deal with her Saber and Kuzuki and like her army of familiars and then there's Sasaki oh my god we're kind of screwed I don't know how we're getting out of this one but something to say is I wonder if this goes back to her lore I don't know who she is, but, uh, she comes from the Age of Gods, I do remember that point, so she is part of a mythology, definitely. It's either gonna be Greek or Roman. We haven't seen a Norse god yet, so that'd be cool, but I don't, I don't know any really Norse peoples that much. The only real experience I have with Norse mythology is through God of War 2018, but Holy shit, I gotta sneeze. Ah, yes, I muted my mic just in time. Woo, Pog! Anyway. Okay. It's either Greek or Roman. But the thing is, did she betray or did she get betrayed? I'm gonna assume that she got betrayed. Ooh. But yeah, we're, we're kind of, like, in a bigger pile of shit than we thought previously because now Saber is kind of her puppet. Oh, that's just, that's just peachy. That's fantastic. Thanks. Red light erupts. Magical energy flows out like tumbling water. It spreads through Saber's body, destroys every rule controlling her, and... The connection between Saber and me is completely cut. 
does that mean? It, wait. If we could somehow get Saber back by defeating Caster, could Shiro make another contract with Saber and get three more command spells? Would that be possible? Would Kotomine Kire allow that, though? Like, he could supply them. I don't know. Saber crumples onto the floor. There's a mark like a bruise on her forehead. It's probably like a control mark. Yeah. I see three marks appearing on Caster. Those are your command spells? Never mind. Yeah, the command spell to control the servants. What used to be on me, the proof of being Saber's master is on her arm now. That's right. We got the name drop during the Fate Route rule breaker. So it breaks, like, rules. If it breaks contracts, it kind of... I guess it, it just defies, like, laws of understanding, maybe. Nullifies any magic. I see. Saber's moaning on the floor, as if fighting against the poison that, in, that entered her. Oh yeah, it, it's unfortunate, but she's kind of crazy. Keikaku Dori, what do you mean? I mean, to be fair, Berserker was the only one she ever feared. So she's she's thinking it's GG. She wins the the game. Cast her last and picks up Fujine. Can you at least put her down? You got what you wanted. Yay, thank you. Nice girl, Caster. <laughs> what a nice person. Giving us back Fujine after taking Saber? Wow, so kind. Fujine's body floats up. She goes through the air as if being pulled by an invisible arm. I catch her at once. There's no reply, but her body is warm. Fujine is unconscious, but she's still breathing and is unwounded. I sigh with relief. I feel like you're lawful evil, right? Because this is like lawful evil energy. Is it graphic? No, what, which one is it again? Status? Neutral evil, really? No lawfulness, I guess. I mean, neutral... I guess I see it, definitely. Nice, we get to see her noble phantasm on here now. Rule breaker, destroyer of all marks. I like the image they picked for it. It's awesome. C, anti magic, noble phantasm, range one. one. An ultimate anti magic noble phantasm that returns any object strengthened with magic, bound by contract, or any life form created out of magic to a state prior to its creation. The, the most ultimate nullifier of all time. A magical weapon that materializes the divinity of the witch of betrayal. Like its appearance, its attack power is weak, and it has only the killing power of a knife. The Witch of Betrayal? Did Caster betray somebody with that dagger? She- I mean, she does- she does magic. She could have been a witch during her time. Hmm. The plot thickens. Hopefully we get her identity soon, because I'm excited. I want to go watch videos about whoever she is, because I like learning about these people. Because, believe it or not, like, I never knew who Kukulain was until I, like, got introduced to Fate, and I started watching a shitload of um, overly sarcastic productions videos. And I remember Ku's video popping out, I'm like, OH MY GOD, IT'S KU, YEAH, BOY! Anyway. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, bro. We're just a cool bean. Dick move, caster. Dick move. 
Sorry, Saber, your bravado ain't gonna work against that insane ability of hers. Saber glances at Castor while on her knees. How does one sign up to be Castor's familiar? I just need to know for personal research. Um, okay! <laughs> just disappears. <laughs> Saber's voice fills up with pain, but on the other hand, ha, 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 other hand, Saber's body slowly gets up against her will. Oh no, she just like, okay, it looked like she disappeared. Saber's body moves. She charges at Tosaka with the same speed as before, and... Okay. Um, she thrusts her sword. Are you serious right now? Alright, so Shiro totally, like, walked into it. That's how it happened, I already know. Yep, I figured. I've, I've played this game long enough to know that Shiro is the one that's gonna take any of the blunt force damage. That's not really blunt force damage, that's like an actual piercing damage. I feel a dull pain on my shoulder. I feel the steel stab into my shoulder. The sword that should be invisible is outlined in my blood. Ow! Suddenly, Church on the Hill plays! <laughs> Suddenly, in the church beyond, Kire feels a chill down his spine. <laughs> He can sense that the blood has been spilled from an, from Emi Ashiro as he laughs. Ha 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 This is entertaining! <laughs> I hear Tosaka's voice from behind me, but I can't do anything no matter what she says. It's just that my body moved on its own, and most of all, I didn't want to see Saber attack Tosaka. I don't want to see it, so I just placed myself in between them. Ow! My body twitches. Saber's sword hasn't stopped yet. Okay, it's like slicing through your entire shoulder? It rips into my f Ow! Jesus! It rips into my flesh and grates against my collarbone. The sword will eventually cut the arteries in my neck and kill me. That's... Not good. That's just putting it bluntly, Shiro. I wouldn't... Just... I think getting stabbed... Sliced, actually, down the neck into the collarbone near your... Um... Near your artery... Is, uh, pretty, pretty bad. I'm still holding on to Fujine. What a fucking legend. You gotta love Shiro. And Tosaka is behind me as well. <laughs> Far away, Caster is saying something. Oh, wow. How are we getting out of this? If she's gonna pop a whole command spell for this, then. Ar Ar Unless Archer just shows up. A cold hearted order. With sounds as if opposing it, Saber's arm shakes and stops. Are you serious? Her magic is that. Uh. Magic resistance A. No magi today are able to hurt Saber. I mean. Man, her magic resistance is crazy, bro. That's insane. Are you serious? Caster is astonished. Saber looks down, bites her lips, and desperately pulls back her sword. She moans in despair. Are you gonna tell us to run away? Drip. Saber hangs her head and cries. Oh! Mm, I could tell that she was going to say Nigete or. Mm, Saber! So sad. Oh. Saber pleads with so much effort that she might cough up blood. Oh, poor Saber. Alright, we need to get out of here. We gotta regroup, re strategize, re energize, and come back for vengeance. Yeah, just, just a second. My entire shoulder is gone, but, you know, we're fine. I run, my arm pulled by Tosaka. The wound on my shoulder is so hot that my mind's not working. But I have Fujine in my arms, and I have accepted that running away is the only option. No. I have no choice but to accept it. What a contradiction. 
She threw away her pride as a swordsman and told me to run away. To honor her wish is the greatest help I could provide for her. But on the other hand, ignoring her tears and running away means losing her. Oh, that's rough. Ooh, this is a little cool transition to her house with that's I like that. A little short and sweet, but my breath is ragged. I don't know where we ran, but the familiar western style mansion is before me. I run, being pulled by someone. My body is strangely light. I must have gotten light after losing the things within me, or I just feel nothing. The only weight I feel is the body of Fujine in my arms. I can't see well. I'm not sure where I'm walking, nor what I'm doing. Someone takes away the person in my arms. The important weight disappears. At the same time, my body becomes heavy. The light body turns into iron, and I fall, unable to keep myself up. Yeah. I mean, this, this had to happen. Like, I'm surprised he was able to get all the way there with sheer willpower alone. I hear someone's voice. My body is heavy and hot. I imagine turning red. Does it get this hot when you put steel in fire to make a sword? I, I swear to god, Shiro like has the biggest fucking hard on for swords that he has to make sword analogies. Isn't this like one of the things that Archer said at the beginning of the game? In his like little speech thing that he did? Or it sounds like it. The heat gradually goes away as time passes. A room I don't know. I stare at the ceiling with a boiling head. That's the only thing I can do. It seems I'm lying on a bed. Yeah, we're not near Saber, so Avalon isn't going to be taking effect, and our contract isn't bound, so... Are we going to be perma-handicapped? If, if that's the case, how are we even going to win this? A calm voice unlike before. The person that brought me here to treat my wound. Wow. That genuinely means a lot coming from Tosaka. It really goes to show how much she cares about Shiro now. I mean, she always, ha always has. But the fact that she's going to put this entire burden on herself is a bit crazy. Says those words. I try to say something and my vision turns black. My eyelids fall. Anesthesia causes my body to fall asleep. I feel someone leaving and hear the sound of the door closing. My consciousness turns off at that moment. Ooh, interlude. Pog. It's probably gonna be between Archer and Rin, I'm guessing. The sun sets. The sun, which wasn't even visible, sets and the dark sky gets even darker. I wouldn't expect much else of a, of a response, really. That's the only response Archer gave. His master, Tosaka Ren, simply stated the facts, but he states it even more matter-of-factly. Yep. Nah, he's like, I'm just gonna... He's like, nah, fam. これと言っただけ作は思いつかないが。だが、奴の方部が判明しただけでも、容姿とするべきだ。サーバントとマスターの契約を断つか。事前にそれを知っておけば、うまくことを運べるだろう。それはそうだけど。I mean, I don't know if it would work, but if we could get Rule Breaker to be used on her, like, that could be a way to do it, but I don't know how that would be possible, is the thing. Only because he had to, really. Yeah, he really didn't. He just kind of just fucked around along with the ride. Oh, oh man. 
and all of a sudden, Twitter canceled fate. I almost spit out my drink. That was brilliant. I can agree with that. She's charming, but in the weirdest way. But in all seriousness, Ren is getting uh, canceled. Well, not not Ren. Everyone who likes Ren as a wife who's getting canceled now. I'm I'm going to jail. <laughs> she smiles pleasantly. Archer has to be like this. An unemotional person isn't that partner Ren trusts. Isn't the partner Ren trusts. Her partner has to always be composed and has to speak cynically against anyone. Ren knows that is the kindness of this night. Speaking cynically is like indirectly telling others to fix that part of them. So, hmm, interesting. That was kind of a little bit of an introspection. Hmm, we're gonna hit him with the facts and logic, actually. Dude, we're proving triangles, man. We're showing, we're, we're like doing our homework and we're showing our, our evidence on why we proved that a triangle equals whatever number. Yeah, that was weird. I'll give you that. I don't know if you knew her from your previous life. What do you mean by that? Oh my god, now now there's multiple different theories in my head. How could reincarnation theory work if that okay, I feel like that line isn't there just to be like like that that has more meaning. Like Nasu, I, I know you. I, I can see you typing away with your mushroom hat, toad looking ass, typing this amazing story and putting this in there with that little seed planted down as if to say, ha ha! No one's gonna notice, but I notice because I'm a nerd. And I'm also really fucking stupid sometimes, but hey, I guess that works in my favor, you know? You know, my, my whole theory of Archer being, like, like a, um, like, or would it be vice versa? Because if Archer came first, then wouldn't Shiro be a reincarnation of Archer, or would Archer be? But wouldn't it, like, if I thought that Kiritsugu would have been the reincarnation of Archer, then, like, that would have connected... Mm. I, I do think that the uh, that Kiritsugu and Shiro, maybe it's just Shiro, but I feel like that entire trio are connected in some way. But I feel like if if Archer is analogous to Shiro, would that mean that he is just parallel to Shiro, like a parallel timeline or some shit? Like, are we gonna delve into some fucking Steins Gate shit right now? Is there, like, a, a version of Saber in his past? So, like, we have these two direct parallel lines that go towards the same present because of janky fucking realm of heroic spirits and time and grail shenanigans? I feel like that would take a lot to explain. I'm sure Nasu's skilled enough to do that kind of writing. But, I mean, I'm still gonna bank on reincarnation theory because I think that's the one I'm gonna go with, but... This line just stuck. Uh, th this line just struck me as a little odd. You know what? You know what I mean? So, Kana. Archer's like, well, yes, I'm addicted to everyone. So, more of a whole name, but I didn't know. I'm on the kiddo. I'm not a bit. 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 I'm I actually kind of like that explanation for it. I think that's that's accurate. Archer frowns. He must have been self-conscious of it. Knight in red ponders with a troubled expression, and his master looks at him in pleasure. And suddenly... Yeah. 
They're really going here. They're really going here. Okay. There's no way it's it's the same same Britain that Saber was from. They would have known each other then. She says so as of testing something. Damn you, Nasu! Yeah, you what? What? Dude, I need. I'm smoking all the green grass right now because this is. I've started to get really excited because we're getting more lore bits and more like. We're getting more lore about who this fucker is. And I'm just trying to think. Okay, so if he does remember Saber, but Saber doesn't remember him, how's that even possible? I guess maybe if Archer and Shiro's souls are linked because of like reincarnation, that could be it. Or there could be. It could be because of the. Um... You know that little dimension, that, that, that pocket dimension that exists outside of time where the heroic spirits reside? Maybe they met there. But Sabre didn't remember because of her situation with her contract with, um, with the Grail. Because we all know that Sabre's situation was, uh, technically different than, um, traditional servants. And Archer kept making a point of, uh, separating heroic spirits and servants. So if we take this as fact that Sabre is a heroic spirit, then that could make sense. Are we all from different... Could they... Could there be, like... Could this genuinely be, like... Multi-timeline dimension? Like, each spirit's... Each heroic spirit's past is... Different comparatively to each other? Like, do you see where my brain's going? Like, if... But they all arrive at this specific present, this single line... Like, their originals exist outside that space. It's running in a parallel skew to this timeline, if, if that makes sense. It, it, it's like it exists out. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys get what I'm saying, what I'm thinking here? Because this is kind of cool. Um, Dude. This is pretty poggers. We're learning. All right, let's go ahead and continue the video game because, you know, I've been theorizing for like seven minutes and I'm going to assume a lot of people probably skipped it. <laughs> I, I understand. Don't worry. Sometimes I skip ahead in videos where I'm like, just get to the next moment, my guy. Bro, if we were lovers, then damn. I guess, uh... That would make, make it weird. That would make it really weird. Damn, if only you knew. <sighs> if only you knew Saber's NP. She doesn't sound disappointed. It's just an offhanded remark. It's like the, the memory is clearing up as we keep going. I, is it tied to Shiro in some way? Like, with what's happening to Shiro, his memory comes back? I don't know, dude. Oh, yeah, uh, Fujine. Nope, he was just. <laughs> Archer, you're such a dick. He can't, he refers. He refers to, to Shiro as. How is the one you brought here doing? Is that one doing fine? You can't even call him by name. He hates him that much. It's beautiful. What a relationship. Archer just breaks one of the chairs. I am out. Bullshit. Oh, okay. Alright, no, I was right originally. Could you imagine that? That would have been hilarious. Oh, Fujimura-sensei. 
あの人なら寝室で寝かせてあるわキャスターの眠りの魔術を受けているけど本人はすっごく元気よ処置はしてきたから1週間眠り続けてる How are you gonna feed her and、uh, get rid of human waste? I'm just not gonna think about it そうかだがキャスターの魔術なら Yeah, that's accurate. We, we just gotta go take her out. So, ne. Dono Michi say hi, say so, Monaga Kuatsukana. Each Nichi de Mohaya Kuyasta was house she. But the thing is, we're, we're handicapped with the fact that Saber is gone and now Shiro is an actual cripple. So, I genuinely am excited to see how we get out of this situation. I love when a story can prevent. Uh, not prevent, present a situation that seems so impossible to get through, but then with grit and wits and integrity, the gang comes through, and you just you realize that the answer was there and that it's really cool. I love stories that do that shit. Archer nods, and after a brief pause in the conversation, Yeah, we need to go do stuff. We need to plan. Do some reconnaissance. Yeah. Yeah, we need to go do stuff. We need to plan. Do some reconnaissance. Yeah. We need to go do stuff. We need to plan. We are lucky that Saber's magic resistance is so high, otherwise, we'd be boned. All of us would be dead. Yeah. We need to go do stuff. We need to plan. Do some reconnaissance. Yeah. We need to go do stuff. We need to plan. Do some reconnaissance. So, uh, Archer, you want to kill that guy? You want to kill him? Bro. I'm afraid Rin cares too much about him now to let that slide. Kinda, there's a little bit more depth to it, but you know. I just some brutal honesty. Damn, okay. She declares stubborn, like, I get that you're stubborn, but wow, that's a way to out stubborn a stubborn man. What can he reply to that? Sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. His voice sounds cynical. She just laughs it off and makes an order. Are we gonna scout the Ryuda Temple? Well, that does. Unless we get an entire day with just these two and they defeat Caster, I mean, maybe. There's no need to answer. The knight in red nods and follows his master. Gloomy clouds are still overhead. A moonless night. She departs with Archer to take aim at her target. Interlude out. Is that where the dance? No, nope, a little bit more. Oh, okay! It feels like I just got punched. I wake up from the pain in my shoulder. My body's still there. I feel my limbs and hear my own breathing. There's a bandage wrapped around my shoulder and the bed I'm, I'm in is soft. I don't know. And someone said... Yeah, that line is very interesting to me because of Rin's response to Archer about the contract ending. I feel like... Hmm. I get up. I remember everything and jump from the bed. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, sure, but you, uh, I don't even think you're going to be able to move. Pain causes my back to arch. I feel my left shoulder. It's burning hot. It feels much worse than a pulled muscle. No, I'm lucky that my arm is still attached after a sword went through it, but it still hurts bad. I slowly get out of bed. I can bear this pain if I grip my teeth. Then... The heat in my shoulder reaches my head. I shake it off and move my legs. There shouldn't be anyone. I remember Tosaka's words. She said those words and left. So she went to fight by herself. I 
I head to the door. I have to go outside. I have to go find Osaka. I, I fall. I almost collapse and support myself using the dresser. Shit. It's useless. I fall along with the dresser. Really? Even in a moment like this, you're... Never change, Shiro. Never change. I pick up the scattered stuff. I find something familiar. Oh, her pendant! It's a simple pendant made out of crystal. I saw it somewhere. Yeah, it was like this back then as well. The night I got pierced by Lancer. The fatal wound was healed before I knew it. There was something I picked up when I left the hallway with a tired body. It's hot. The poison in my shoulder gets to my brain and makes me dizzy. I know, but my mind does not think. Like the thing I dismissed as a dream. Like whose servant was fighting Lancer at that time. Like who could have saved me and who could have been there at that time. There's no need to think about it, but my head is spinning. Oh. I feel dizzy. My head's messed up from pain, heat, and self-deprecation. I feel that. I move my legs. I have to look for her. I have something I want to tell her, and there's something she needs to know. That all I can think about with this dizzy head. That's all I can think about with this dizzy head. Dude. I love that this track is playing during this part. This is one of my favorite tracks in the game. It's grown on me so much throughout this entire game. Leave it to Shiro to be like a walking corpse going out here to find Tosaka to tell her what he's going to tell her. When my senses return, I'm in front of the station. My hazy head is moving based on a vague image that she's there. It orders me to go there if I am to look for her. Could the burning be like a, a connection to Archer? I don't know why I'm directed here. My boiling head is only thinking about this building. Then I can only follow my instincts. I didn't have any way to look for Dosaka from the start. So I can only cling to this thing. I get to the rooftop. The wind blowing here is even colder and cools down my heated brain. I hear someone gasp. Tosaka is looking down at the town from here like that one night. Ouch. I mean, yes, I, I, I assume so. She expresses her anger and stares at me. Behind her... He is standing there, telling me silently that I am of no use. Oh my god, that's so sweet! Damn it, Shiro! I collect my hazy mind and move my lips. Even so... Even so, that's not going to stop him. I almost faint at her words. It pisses me off. He has a sense of duty to save her as well as um, keeping Tosaka safe. My vision turns red. I can't talk. Just yelling makes my muscles cramp up and I almost die. You see, this is a really cool 
appreciation I have for the Unlimited Blade Works route is the fact that we get to see Shiro at such a low point without Saber and him being forced to fight against all odds to be equivalent to being able to stand against these threats on his own despite his limited ability, despite the fact that he's just a completely amateur, beyond beginner mage. I just think it's brilliant. I feel like... I feel like as a writer, being able to write a character and explore their character in so many different ways really makes them a very impressive dynamic character because Shiro I feel like Shiro is a very reactionary character that he does have his set morals and principles and that he is a product of his past and of what happened and he um, has those traumas right but I feel like it's Hmm, what am I trying to say? You see, the story doesn't revolve around Shiro. Shiro revolves around the story. He reacts progressively to what's happening in the plot and changes accordingly. And what makes him so deep is that it all feels so natural and so poignant that when you see him make these decisions, it isn't out of left field. It has meaning to it and has merit. There's actual enough capacity for a change, a spark to see Shiro head into that direction as a character. And using the visual novel format to split um, a story into three parts with each delving into a different aspect of the character is brilliant. It absolutely shows a genius level of writing mastery when it comes to character writing. Because... I'm just very impressed at it, you know? All I can say is I, I really enjoy seeing Shiro have to adapt in this this cold, harsh reality of him being without what truly made him strong, because he's strong. But I feel like the whole point is people argue that he's only strong because of having Saber or because of having Avalon, but there's so much more and he's going to be able to prove himself. And I think that that is something that he needs to go through to grow. There's also the fact that... Um, his connection to Archer is really, really making this route for me. Rin... I just, I don't know how Nasu managed to write this, this game. And I also am kind of terrified to watch the anime to see how much they butcher my boy. Because when you have such a complex character, I don't know how you could write them into a 24 episode series with... You know, with limited... Hmm. Like, Fate isn't like Death Note or like Steins Gate where you're constantly hearing the character's thoughts like back and forth, back and forth between what they're thinking. It's a very standard shonen-like show. I mean, if you've watched Zero, you get what I mean. It's it's more than that, right? It has more depth, but I assume that the Unlimited Bladeworks anime would follow that shonen structure to a T where that wouldn't be a major focus and you wouldn't be able to see the awesome dynamics of his character. <laughs> I love how that line was brought back. Awesome. That is amazing. Damn. I know that. I know, but it's so painful that I can't speak. Harsh, but that's that's coming from the Mega side of you. Unfortunately, Shiro could never agree to that. It does concern me. All the more if Saber has helped me with pain like this up until now. 
セイバーは嫌がっていたあんな奴の言いなりになんてさせられそうけどあなたは無力よいいわあなたが認めようとしないのなら代わりに私が言ってあげる今のあなたじゃセイバーを助けることなんてできない My heat disappears. Her cold words freeze my boiling brain. I feel like, as much as this is harsh and painful and hard to hear, I, I feel like that in life we often need a person like Tosaka with that no bullshit kind of cold attitude that allows them to speak the truth to you without sugarcoating. I think that that's something that most people aren't able to do. And that's why people like her are necessary in people's lives, I think. And I think because of how stubborn and how. how Shiro is as a person, that this is a really good relationship dynamic that kind of. strengthens, like, uh. it, it makes sense. Like, I could see where their relationship is going and. As the romance blossoms, which I'm gonna assume is gonna start getting really intense soon, I get it. I really like that, you know, like it feels like each heroine saves Shiro in a different way, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, not saving his life, but saving him in a different way. Like, you know what I mean. <laughs> Saber was not dead, but the master was not dead. The Saber was not dead, but the Saber was not dead. So, here we go. Let's 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 go. I reach out frantically. There's no need for that. The knight in red appears next to Tosaka as if protecting her. Even if she jumps off from this height, there's, she should be able to land without a pr problem if she has her servant, I see. Tosaka's lips move slightly. I can't hear what she said, but her eyes. You'll die if you keep involving yourself. Coley, tell me so as if it's the last warning. My heat returns. The heat and the pain make my mind go crazy. I cannot save Saber. And there is no reason for Emi Ashura to fight. My wound hurts. I look down at the night scenery that swallowed Tosaka and repeat those words in my head. God damn, another interlude? Okay. Poor Shiro, man, that hurts, bro. I feel for him so much. It is a quiet night. The wind blowing on the mountain is gentle, and the rustling of the trees is as quiet as a whisper. There are no birds singing about winter, nor are there beasts howling at the moon. The only path leading to the Ryu the only the only path leading to the Ryuta Temple. The long stone steps preserve its peacefulness tonight as well. But others do not know. Its place has withstood five battles already. Each one was a great clash. Many servants challenged the Ryota Temple. Berserker, Lancer, Rider, Saber, Archer. This mountain gate is able to enjoy the darkness thanks to the monster that has repelled all five enemies. The long sword moves. It is fortunate that the moon is not out. The arc of the sword moving in a crescent moon shape is so beautiful that the moon would be ashamed of itself if it saw it. <laughs> He ignores the magus in purple, Castor. The assassin lowers his longsword and glares at the mountain forest without interest. Jamamono <laughs> It's good that you can acknowledge that. Caster walks to the forest and looks down at the thing on the ground. It is the corpse of an owl. 
It is a bird made from crystal. It is simple but suited for spying, and must have been made by Archer's master. Damn. Damn. She steps on it. The amethyst crystals are crushed to powder, scattering like star-shaped dust. Scattering star-like dust. God, I wish that were me. そうなれば、あなたとて存在してはいられない。消えたくなければ死ぬ気でもを守りなさい。さて、死ぬ気でというのは難しいな。Damn. I mean, I get it. I get it, Sasuke. Don't worry, brother. Dude, Sasuke, you're kind of a savage. Love it. He's just like, okay! <laughs> just disappears. Cass's words are filled with enmity and contempt. For her, assassin is only a tool. It is annoying for a tool to talk, so it is natural for her to get mad when it starts to speak cynically. Ooh, a promise? Oh, a saber to fight, right? It's a promise, man. Really? So I wanted to say this because I've thought about it a lot, but um I feel like Fate Zero like Urubuchi kind of copy pasted a lot of like the stainite elements like i feel like deer mud as much as i love my boy deer mud he's just a copy of sasaki but more chivalrous and you know i feel like Ryder and uh, urobuchi's caster were probably the most probably the most unique um, in the sense of them being completely different. But we, we're not even going to go uh, uh, to talk about the tragedy that is Saber in uh, Urobuji's work, but... I feel like, as much as I love my boy Lancelot, it just... You know, it just... It's like Heracles again. You know? I mean, there is some incredible foreshadowing with it, but... I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm I'm alone, but I feel like Zero is just... Like, it only exists because the Stay Night novel exists, that's the whole point. But I feel like it's god status. Um, like, Urobuchi's a good writer, let, let, let's, not, let's not shit on him. What I'm saying, though, is that what makes Zero incredible is the foundation that Stay Night set up. And the real god is Nasu. Like, we should be worshipping Mushroom Guy. Mushroom Man, Mushroom Woman, we don't fucking know. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you're... <laughs> Sasuke calling her out, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Sasaki. <laughs> Is he seriously gone? At that instant, the assassin's body explodes, a thumping sound. The curse that was put into his body upon summoning has exploded. The trees sway. Assassin is flung into the forest, his chest pierced from within by his own ribs. Okay. His figure is like a bloom flower. That's disgusting. I can see it, actually. Damarinasai. 
Does that mean we won't have to fight Tasuki now because he's like needs five days to heal or something? Damn, Sasuke! <laughs> the flashy servant gets up. The servant does not lose his elegance even if he shows his ribs or if his body is covered in blood. I feel like Sasuke's words are cutting deeper than I realize. Hmm. I'm sure these words will make sense later. <laughs> Sasuke's a sore loser. Ren, sh Ren shows up and he's just like, Oh, gotta tie my shoe. Oh no, they got inside. How did that happen? I mean, at least you're smart, Gaster. Fair enough. The church, maybe? Sasson's <laughs> I thought that said exposition. Expression which had been cool up to now clouds up. Cast her smile. Cast her smiles as if she's satisfied. <laughs> We're setting something up big for the next day, I'm assuming. I wonder what, what Sasaki said to what his words meant to cut her so deep like that. Hmm. You imagine if Caster was doing all of this just to get his her master to approve of her? That'd be some shit. I don't think that's the case, but you know. That is true. No matter how much Caster's master Kuzuki Soichiro stays silent, he would be forced to fight if the conditions are set so perfectly. But what is more certain is that... I really want to learn your identity, please. I just... Loud laughter pollutes the night. The Magus in purple expresses her victory. The knight with the long sword looks up at the sky. The time is near. No matter what the end may be, only five days remain. Even though the remaining time will not likely be used up, the swordsman that has lived through hell feels that the match will not be settled easily. Ooh, foreshadowing. Yeah, we only have five days of game left, so, you know, use it wisely, I guess. And I fall. I can't even breathe properly. The wound on my shoulder is swelling up and it hurts just to breathe. I can't keep my consciousness. I'll fall asleep if I let my guard down. No, first of all, I'm not too sure if I'm conscious or not. I don't know how I got home from that rooftop, nor why I came home. Stop! I don't want to... Ugh, ever-present feeling always gets me in the feels. My thoughts become vague. The only sure thing is my thumping heart. Tosaka told me to not involve myself. Because I'm powerless and I don't have a reason to fight anymore. But that's wrong. I knew more than anyone that I'm powerless. My reason to fight is something different. I can't let it become just a scar. Losing against others is inevitable. I'm used to being beat up, and it's vexing. 
but I know I can't reach them no matter what I do. But that's only when my enemy is someone else. I can't lose against myself. There's no element that would make me lose if our powers are equal. To admit defeat against such an enemy is to declare that I'm wrong. The wound distorts. Blood stains the bandage. I grab it with my left hand and glare at the darkness. The memory from ten years ago. The words of the man who was my father. Even if I was wrong from the start, there is nothing wrong with the path I took. I wanted to be a superhero so that incident wouldn't just become a sad memory. A time where everyone would be happy and shed no tears. I have held that ideal for ten years. It doesn't matter how badly my head refuses to function. What needs to be done is determined from the start. I didn't fight because I became a master. I decided to fight because it's something I can do, and I believed it's something I have to do. I finally remember the obvious. If I believe it is right, I will believe in this path until the very end. I won't stop. And I won't let her fight by herself. That's why I will sleep now. I won't let her call me a burden. I'll heal this wound up in one night. And when I wake up in the morning... And when I wake up in the morning... I'll catch up to her for sure and repay her for what she did that night. Oh, what an ending to a day, dude. That, that, that was so good. It was so good. Ooh, Moonlight. Ah, oh, it's like part two. Makes sense. We're splitting it into like... What if this is like entire battles three days? Like we get Moonlight part three or something? What a day. Uh, you get a wholesome first like third of the day with the date and then the final two thirds of insanity. All I could say about Shiro's character is that he's such a good fucking character. I just... I love this whole aspect of Shiro. Oops. No, 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 no. Holy shit, Kotomine? Okay, that's gonna be fun for next episode. Pog. I guess we'll listen to this track as I give my closing thoughts. Shiro admitting that, uh... That if he were to lose to himself, it would mean that he's wrong is really, really cool. It really reminds me of, um, in Death Note, when Light states that if, if Kira wins, then he is justice, but if he is, if he loses, then he isn't justice. That's just how it is. It kind of reminds me of that in a way. I really love how Shiro can admit that he is powerless and that he's always known this. He's not an idiot. He's known from the start his own weaknesses, but he knows for a fact that he's strong enough to uphold his ideals and that he is equal in strength with himself. If he's talking in, in that way, I feel like we're going to get more comparisons to Archer. It's like they're, like I said, they're two sides of the same coin. Like, I get that that's vague, but I truly feel that that's the case. Archer is connected to Shiro in a way that I don't get. Either alternate timeline, reincarnation, or... Something, I, I don't fucking know. All I know is Archer's connected. You know, the only thing that I don't get is his dark skin and white hair. 
I mean, if, if it was an alternate universe, that could be the case. It could very well be possible. Unless... Unless Archer, as a heroic spirit, has been summoned... ...throughout all parts of time. Like, maybe he was summoned to do something in the Great Age of Britain, and that's where he met Saber, but Saber never remembered him or some shit. I don't know. I think that goes against the rules of how heroic spirits work. If anyone can... Um, if, if someone could type um, how exactly the contracts and heroic spirits work completely, like 100% so I can get a refresher, I'd really appreciate it. Because I want to be able to make my theories without having contradictory information to the game's lore. But um, I hope you guys understand where my thought process is. I had a lot of fun with today's episode. It was absolutely a really solid one. We're entering like the final third of the game. Um, I know that the days coming are going to be extremely long, like probably two and a half, three to three and a half hours each. But still, in terms of how many days are left, it's like a third. Um, so we're, we're really getting into the thick and thin of uh, where this, this, this route is truly going to make me bust. So I'm excited for the next episode, and I hope that you guys are all too. Uh, you know... I'm going to assume that a lot of you guys, after watching this episode, are going to be like, Okay, time to wait a month for the next one. Well, you may just be surprised. I plan on surprising you folks, because y'all deserve it. I, um, I love doing this content because it's fun, and I love stories, and I really enjoy fate. And I love engaging with the community, because it's just... It feels nice. It gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling, and... Providing content that makes someone's day or makes you guys just have fun or laugh is something that makes me happy. So, and it makes me happy. I have fun doing this and I want to see how the story concludes. So, you know, you may just be surprised with the upload rates of uh, the future. But uh, please leave any comments or questions down below of whatever you can think of. I'll be sure to respond and answer them. Um... There is one other thing I wanted to say, is thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. It really helps me out a ton because of that juicy, juicy watch time. I just want to say thank you once again. You guys mean the world to me. And of course, wherever it is that you are, whoever it is that you are, whether it's morning, day, evening, or night, be sure to stay safe and take care out there. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Fate Unlimited Bladworks. Unlimited Blade Blad Vlad... An unlimited Vladimir works. It's probably not a good thing to say nowadays, but I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna just say goodbye and see you guys in the next episode. Pog. <laughs>